okay so uh, you just tell me uh, have we derived this equation for hydraulic exponents capital M We have completed this derivation for hydraulic exponent capital M for computation of critical depth. I think you ha uh, we have not completed this. Okay, fine. Okay, so you write down this. Okay, next topic is this. General equation for hydraulic exponent m okay capital m for computation of critical depth in open channel flow or in a open channel okay Over. Okay. So then, uh, I think this equation we have already derived that condition for critical depth q square t by g a cube is equal to one. So you put equation number one. Okay, this. So this equation we have already derived. Okay. So from this equation. We keep that q by g in one side and other term we will q square g we will keep one side and other terms we will put in the right hand side okay that will be your a cube divided by t okay we have one here if we cross multiply it will be a cube divided by t okay so here we have q square by g is equal to a cube by t okay okay then what we do we want to remove this square okay so here we can also write root over g whole square okay okay whole square then it will be again q square divided by g okay we have taken root g so it will be square then it will be g okay a cube divided by t okay okay so next again if we remove that uh, remove that square then it will be q by root over g is equal to a to the power 3 by 2 okay a to the power 3 by 2 goes to the power half will come here okay and t to the power half okay okay so you write this equation okay q by root over g is equal to a to the power 3 by 2 to the power and divided by t to the power half is equal to again you can write in this way also a to the power 3 by 2 and this divided by half t to the power half you can write t to the power minus half okay as it is divided so if you put it in the multiplication then your to the power will be negative
okay so then we move on to the next line okay it's very simple only we have to consider that critical flow condition that is q square t by g a cube is equal to one okay so by definition of section factor that is z okay z is nothing but your section factor or you can say q by root over g q by root over g is nothing but your z or you can also call it as a section factor so z is equal to q by root g n is equal to we can write this expression a to the power 3 by 2 p to the power minus half and we put equation number 2 So in the next line you write z is equation number 2 z in equation number 2 is a function of depth okay so it is also can be written as you write this expression z square equal to c y to the power m okay so that m you write capital okay this m is capital don't write small you write y to the power m that is your capital m okay and put equation number 3 z square equal to c y to the power capital M Then you can write where C is your constant and capital M is nothing but your hydraulic exponent for computation of critical flow. And Y is your depth of flow, okay? Y is your depth, C is a constant and that capital M, that is Y to the power M, that capital M is nothing but your hydraulic exponent for computation of critical flow, okay? Okay. Then we are going to take logarithm in equation number three. Okay. We are going to take logarithm in equation number three. So it will be z squared. So it will be twice log e z is equal to log e c plus m log e y. Okay. So y to the power m is there. So m will come here multiplied by log e y okay i think this thing is now it's very much familiar to you because such derivation we have already performed for hydraulic exponent in uniform flow by Cezis and Menin's equation if you remember their process is almost same okay only here you have to consider that critical flow condition that is q square t by g a cube is equal to one okay and we have to consider section factor and in that uh, uniform flow the hydraulic exponent that is capital n for deriving we have two types one is uh, using manning's equation and one is using sages equation okay but the process is almost same in all the three derivation okay so here also first you have to take logarithm then we have to differentiate with respect to y okay so we take logarithm for equation number three and we will get this equation and then we are going to differentiate with respect to y okay so uh, while differentiating
so when you differentiate with respect to y so twice dd of y of log e z is equal to so c is a constant so log is also constant if you differentiate it will be zero okay and m is also a hydraulic exponent so if you differentiate log e y so it will be one by y so you can also write m by y So if you bring this two in the right hand side, so it will be m by twice y. So you could consider this now is a, as equation number four. over then again we have to go back to equation number two okay this is our equation number two and then we are going to do the same process first we will take logarithm and then we differentiate with respect to y okay our aim is to find out an expression for this m that is a hydraulic exponent okay so we need two equation to equate to find out the expression for m okay so here in the left hand side if you see in equation number four is your d d y of log e z okay we have to replace this okay to replace this we need a expression or equation with respect to z value okay so we have another equation that equation number two which is also related to your z okay so if you take log and then if you differentiate then you are going to get the same equation on the left hand side okay so again we are going to take logarithm first for equation number two and then we differentiate with respect to y So first we will take logarithm so you take log log e z will be there plus we have a to the power 3 by 2 so here will be 3 by 2 log e a minus because t to the power minus half is there so we will be having minus here half log e t then we need to differentiate with respect to y so this left hand side will be dd of y log e z is equal to 3 by 2 multiplied by if we differentiate log a it will be 1 by a but a is not y okay but a is a function of y so again we need to differentiate a with respect to y okay so it will be d a by dy minus 1 by 1 by 2 so log e t is the top width okay so if we differentiate log e t it will be 1 by t and again the t is a function of y so we are going to differentiate that t with respect to y so dt by dy okay so the left hand side will remain same left hand side will remain same and here dA by dy is equal to top width we have discussed this many times so dA by dy in place of this we have substitute capital T so that is why here 3T by twice A minus 1 by 2T dT by dy this is your equation number 5 okay so now we are going to equate equation number 4 and 5 to replace this term 
d by dy log e z okay so if we equate as left hand side of the both the equation are same okay so in equation 4 what we have that d by dy log e z is equal to m by twice y so in place of this we can directly substitute m by twice y okay is equal to 3t by twice a minus 2t dt by dy okay other terms will remain same okay so if you see here 3t by twice a 2 is there here also 1 by twice t we have a 2 so we can take it out the 2 as a common so it will be 1 by 2 and again we have this 2 so it will be cancelled out okay so all the 2 will be cancelled out so in the left hand side we kept m that is a hydraulic exponent which is our objective to find an expression for hydraulic exponent so that is why we keep this capital m in the left hand side and we multiply it by y to this equation okay so that is why 3yt divided by a minus y by t dt by dy so this is the final expression for hydraulic exponent okay so this is the final expression or you can say general expression for hydraulic exponent that is your capital m over okay fine so we are end of this unit okay that is your specific energy we solve few more problems and today we complete this uh, unit okay in next class we will move on to our next unit that is our gradually varied flow okay so you write this question okay calculate critical depth yc critical depth yc and corresponding specific energy ec for the following different shapes of the canal or you can say channel okay when the surge is 8.5 meter cube per second you consider only two okay number one and number two that is one is rectangular channel and second one is your triangular channel with side slope 0.5 horizontal is to one vertical it's very simple we already did this type of numericals over Calculate critical depth YC and corresponding specific energy. That means we need to find out 
that for first rectangular channel we need to find out for the rectangular channel what is the value of critical depth and because uh, of that particular critical depth what is the specific energy okay then for triangular channel also you need to find out the same thing first we need to find out the yc value and then we need to find out specific energy corresponding to that critical depth okay we all know for a critical depth we will be having only one specific energy that is your minimum specific energy for that particular discharge okay apart from that for any specific energy you will be having two depth and these two depth are called alternate depth okay i think uh, you remember those things okay so first for rectangular channel first case we will consider that rectangular channel width of the channel is given and then 8.5 meter cube per second is also given that is your discharge okay so if you remember for rectangular channel yc is equal to q square divided by g q square divided by g to the power 1 by 3 okay so to find out the yc first we need to find out the small q and small q is nothing but discharge per unit width of the channel so discharge is given discharge is also given width of the channel is also given so that small q you can easily find out okay next is so once you find out the small q then you can easily find out the yc value okay yc equal to q square divided by g to the power 1 by 3 g is nothing but 9.81 q square you have already calculated which is q by unit depth okay and find out the yc value you will get approximately 1 meter okay and then this specific energy we have already derived this equation ec equal to 3 by 2 yc so whatever the yc value you got if you multiply it by 3 by 2 you will get the specific energy How much you got yc value you're getting the same value okay and for specific energy Oh, yes correct okay mm -hmm. so then we move on to our trapezoidal sorry triangular channel next okay second case is our triangular channel okay for triangular channel with side slope okay i think you have directly written this uh, equation that y c equal to twice q square divided by g z square to the power one by five okay so if you want the derivation you can follow this okay 
is very simple as you see this is our triangular channel 1 by z is the side slope yc is the critical depth okay and these two will be z y okay we have already discussed many times that whenever we have a side slope of 1 by z so this is nothing but your z y or you can consider in this case yc okay so your top width will be nothing but your twice zyc okay zyc plus zyc you will get the top width okay so that is why here you can see top width is equal to twice zyc z is nothing but your side slope and it's given okay in this case is given 0 0.5 sorry 0 0.5 okay so if you find out the area area is nothing but half into base into altitude for a triangular channel okay so area is half So it will be half into base base will be your top width that is your twice z y okay z y or you can say y c and then half into base into altitude then again we will be having y c okay so so your area this two will be cancel out it will be your z y square okay for a triangular channel okay so then uh, again we will consider q square t by g a cube is equal to one that critical flow condition in place of top width we put this expression twice z y c and for area we will substitute this equation z y c square okay and again you simplify you find out the yc to the power 5 you will get this and for yc it's very simple okay only we have to consider this critical flow condition equation and we substitute the area expression and top width expression okay you will get this expression directly so for solving numerical you did not to derive this okay for solving this numerical you can directly use this expression and you find out the yc value okay so discharge is already given q value and z value is also given 0.5 g value you can consider 9.81 and you can directly find out the yc value of a triangular channel you will get 2.26 meter approximately okay and for this you have ec equal to for triangular channel is 5 by 4 ec is equal to 5 by 4 5 by 4 yc okay for triangular channel this is the yc value for ec it is 5 by 4 I see.
Okay, you are getting the same value. Or YC. It's 2.26 meter. And then you find out the EC value, okay? EC value also we will get 2.825. It's 5 by 4 multiplied by whatever YC value you got, okay? multiply you will get Over. Okay, so we completed this unit here. Okay, so in the next class, we are going to start a new chapter called Grizzly Varied Flow. Okay, so we are going to end this class here. Okay, so in the next class, we will start the new chapter. Thank you, students.